This 300 square foot, zero waste tiny house was custom built for a newly retired couple. It has a massive rooftop deck to create some extra outdoor living space and it has a unique floor plan that includes a raised living room with a view and two reverse lofts that eliminate the need for ladders. The owners, Buddy and Barb, are an inspiring, waste-conscious couple with some impressive accomplishments. For nearly 20 years, they ran the award-winning Gibson's Recycling Depot, where they worked to recycle and divert waste from the landfill. And in 2017, they also did the Bolt Across Canada road trip, where they drove across the country in an electric vehicle while creating zero waste on the road. So it's no surprise that their tiny house project incorporates zero waste principles like conserving resources and reducing waste. We've tended to follow the mantra of living our life with a purpose and working with, with a purpose, traveling with a, a purpose. One of the things that we realized is that there is nothing really special about us. We're average people, you know, we're not perfect. I think that we as adults have to do better for our children and grandchildren, right? So we're just trying, and this is our latest example of trying. Mm -hmm. We wanted a holiday, a getaway place, so we decided that we would put a tiny home as a little retreat for ourselves. We call it the Zero Waste Tiny Home. Hummingbird Micro Homes built it up in a Terrace at Blue Glass Meadows Micro Village. When we were interviewing builders, we were telling them about the Zero Waste concept, about uh, trying to build a tiny home that incorporates some of the principles of Zero Waste. The way the building codes work is you have to use new materials. That's basically it. But we wanted to see if we can incorporate as many used materials in, in the project, but also being energy efficient and water efficient um, so that we, we can find special appliances so that we're using less water and windows that are super well insulated that uh, uh, we don't, it doesn't take as much energy to heat the house. So the whole concept was about being very efficient and more sustainable. The floor plan is basically 10 by 30, but with a raised living room, it's 32. We have it on wheels and we can move it anytime we want. And this is CSA approved, so it's safe, right? And also it opens up more opportunities because regional districts and municipalities are demanding like a standard for tiny homes. We're in the kitchen and we're at the kitchen counter and we have our indoor composter here and here's our compost bucket which is recessed in the counter. We don't throw any food waste out in the garbage so we compost on site here and then we take the compost and put it around our trees and our garden. Nice thing about this is it uses very little electricity and it's basically just a dehydrator pathogen killer and it kind of grinds everything up and in about three, four hours, you've got uh, finished material that can go right into the garden. And then the worms and bugs finish it off. Another feature we have here, which I'm really proud about and happy about, is our friends who are custodians of uh, the ghost town in Sand in British Columbia. And they've collected a whole array of old Brill buses. And they donated a light to us from a 1950s Brill bus. And that's one of several repurposed materials or items that we put in our tiny home so that it demonstrates that something that somebody else didn't want has value. Another feature of our kitchen is Barb didn't want to box us in with uh, typical traditional cabinets, right? So we went with this open concept and most of our dishes are repurposed or recycled dishes from thrift stores, and etc. We went, instead of a stand-up fridge, with a drawer fridge and we have a small freezer in our storage area. So this has ample room for two people for our, our needs and it doesn't take up more floor space with uh, a big standing upright fridge. So we don't have upstairs lofts here. So what we've done is created a, um, a reverse loft and that's our bedroom. 
where we've located this is underneath our bathroom and since we have a flat roof if we had a loft up top it'd be identical headroom we have windows on both sides so we have uh, if we have to escape but it gives us fresh air a lot of light natural light in there I don't feel claustrophobic at all it's actually I feel like a little bug in a cocoon one of the things we wanted to, in our bathroom was a large shower with a bench in it in our bathroom we went with a washer dryer combo it's a 110 feature super energy efficient and uh, Sometimes we also take stuff out and hang it on the line outside, so it depends on the weather. And this is our favorite feature in the bathroom, is uh, it's out of Australia. It's a Corona uh, toilet sink combo. So what we're doing is instead of washing our hands in the sink, we wash our hands with perfectly clean water. And just basically wash your hands, you rinse them here. And then next time you flush, that we're reusing that water here. So the nice thing about this too is uh, um, the soap we use helps clean the, the toilet bowl. I've always wanted my own urinal and it's a waterless urinal. So between the waterless urinal and the toilet sink combo, we hardly use any, any water for um, going to the bathroom. It's super, super efficient. We do have a sink for brushing our teeth. And we got a hot water on demand system instead of a hot water tank. So we have our main bed underneath the washroom for Barb and I, and this is a pull-out bed for uh, guests. So we pull this out. This is our clothing drawers right here for us. So this is nice. It's a nice double, super comfortable double bed. And if the kids come or we have guests, this is where we can park them. And the nice thing about uh, our living room being raised as well is this is where the bulk of our storage is. One of the things we have under here is our, our central vac and our little freezer, our TELUS hub, and our security camera system is under there as well. So plenty of storage for us, and, and, uh, and that way it's, we haven't cluttered up. It helps us keep the open area here. It was important that we had a good amount of counter space. Um, it's nice having this wood slab with a live edge on it. And I thought when we were building it, because we have French doors, you don't want to park anything right here. So what we did was we added a, a convertible tabletop and so we can put our hot plate here or if we got guests we can put stuff on there. My pride and joy in this build is this is a section of the Vancouver Commodore Ballroom dance floor which is a world famous venue. I bought a section of it and I've been traveling all over British Columbia with it and now it has a home. <laughs> this is uh, uh, from Expand Furniture out of Vancouver and this really super comfortable couch but also they specialize in things for small apartments in uh, apartments and condos. We bought this from them and it pulls out into a really comfortable double bed as well right and you got a great view around you so we could probably sleep six people and there's enough floor space and we could probably squeeze a couple more in, right? As probably most tiny home builders have found out, putting a wood stove in a tiny home really affects your insurance rates and stuff like that. So I've had this, I picked up at a garage sale years ago and I wanted to put it in here, but not as a functioning stove. So I've rigged up a, uh, a LED fire flame light so at night, this has the effect that it's a it's a wood stove burning and it doesn't actually go through the ceiling it's just cosmetic and I thought since this is going to be here why don't we take the stove pipe and turn it into kind of like a little bar this is a super efficient zero clearance propane heater and it's thermostat uh, controlled we also have a mini split uh, a heat pump so we set this thermostat just a little bit lower than we do our heat pump. So if the power goes out, this comes on. It's 300 square feet. That's smaller than most bachelor apartments. The way we built this one is we went with a roof deck instead of a slope roof. And it shrank the height of the building because you have to go with really beefy ceiling joists. But having the roof deck opens up a whole new world for us because now we instantly have 600 square feet of usable space 
and I could see next year possibly now that we're tracking the sun and we haven't taken a lot of trees down we get a lot of shade here but I can see putting up a couple of solar panels and maybe growing stuff on our roof deck. Our neighbor built us as a surprise this awesome little cabinet to hold our electric vehicle charger and this charger was donated to us from Sun Country Highway uh, who put the first transcontinent charging infrastructure from Pacific to the Atlantic. So when we did our bolt across Canada we use almost exclusively Sun Country chargers. One of the things we're trying to do here too is get off of uh, um, gas powered tools like chainsaws and all our equipment. One of the first things we bought was um, an all electric two stage uh, snowblower. I swapped my uh, two stroke chainsaw and all my other power tools, hedge trimmer, weed eater, all that kind of stuff. It's all, we run it off of batteries so um, we don't have to mix fuel anymore. To conserve water, we capture rainwater. And when we park the uh, tiny home here, I drop the, this end down a little bit so all the flat roof deck water comes this way instead of off the sides or the back. So we pretty well capture all the rainwater that falls and then this is how we water our trees and plants around here. This is the newest addition we just brought up this week. It's an IBC tank. It's 250 gallons for fighting fires. It's, it's tinder dry here in British Columbia this year. So we want to have enough water on hand that we can run a water pump and, and soak down, hopefully fight fires with it, at least around us. It's also, once we're past the forest fire threat, we've got more water for watering our trees and our plants. I think that tiny homes are a wonderful opportunity for all ages. They are a tremendous seniors accommodation, depended on design, but you could be maybe living on the same property of maybe your family, right? And But you, you still have your own space. Even children, right? That first home experience, because tiny homes are much more affordable. In the looking for a place where we could put our tiny home, we decided to look at RV resorts. Some of them are kind of quite expensive and so the farther you get away from major cities, uh, they're a little bit more affordable. And when we got this lot, we bought a, two others that we rent out. Not long after we decided we were going to build this tiny home, we went up to Bluegrass Meadows a Micro Village up in Terrace where there's an existing tiny home community. So we went up there and helped coach them how to reduce their, their solid waste bill. And uh, so they've got a whole little recycling center, composting going on up there. From this point forward, that's something we really want to get involved in is building communities because it's hard to correct some of the bad habits in, in so many of our communities in, in this country. But if people are building brand new communities, why not get in on the ground floor and, and start with healthier, more sustainable habits? So that's kind of how this is evolving. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. You can also follow Buddy and Barb on their website at zerowastetinyhome.com. Thanks for watching.